Hi guys, my name is Barro Dante, and this is gonna be some kind of a weird talking video. I came up with the idea of this video just like half an hour ago after I watched Brad Colbo's video where he said that he sucks at art and he's going back to school. That's pretty much the name of the video. I suck at art, and no, I'm not fishing for compliments, and I'm not trying to find pity, I'm just saying what I think. By the way, if you don't know who Brad Colbo is, this is his channel. He has a really cool channel where he makes a lot of reviews about software and hardware for artists. And I really like his channel, he makes really good and really honest reviews, I really like those. And generally, Brad seems like a pretty cool guy. I mean, I don't know, he might be a pedophile. But he seems like a nice guy from the videos and his content is pretty good. Why, Brain? Why? Anyway, in that video about Brett sucking at art, he described himself as not really being able to paint as good as he would like to, and pretty much agreeing with people that say that his art is not good enough for people to listen to him or something like that. I actually honestly disagree because I really like his drawings that he does pretty much in every single review of any hardware or software. He always makes cool drawings. But anyway, the whole thing is not about me deciding whether Brad is good at art or not. Same as I can't really tell if I'm good or not. Like, it's depending on who's watching the video right now. I might be one of the greatest artists you know, or I might be really lame and you don't even know why you're watching this. So all of that is very much dependable on who's deciding, who's thinking about it. I just wanted to point out this is not a like direct answering to that video of Brad or me trying to teach him something because I don't think I have the authority or the skill level and this video is gonna be the same type of video as all of the videos on my channel where I don't really teach anyone anything, I just make notes with the thoughts that I happen to have at the moment. So I'll start with pointing out that I'm not judging Brad's decision to go back to school, attending some kind of courses or something like that, uh, a series of lessons with homework and stuff like that. Brad mentioned all of that in his video. Of course, whoever's thinking of doing that, you should definitely do that if you feel like you want to. And I totally encourage that only if a person actually wants to. Like, I was trying to analyze how do I actually paint when it turns out good. And I realized that the main reason I really succeeded at doing some paintings is because I knew what I was going for. Which is no surprise, right? In his video, Brad said, like, he described his whole situation and his thoughts on it with the main phrase of I suck at art and I want to become a better artist. And I thought to myself, have I ever thought like that about myself? Or like, I probably did, but has it ever led to anything good? <laughs> And I think it never did. The only actual thought, the only actual direction that I took that actually led to something productive and actually improving myself was a very different thought. Like in art, for instance, I never thought like, I want to become a better artist. It was, I want to paint this painting. You know what I mean? Like, it's not about me. It's about what I do, right? What does it mean to be a good artist? It's making good paintings. And when I heard Brad saying that he wants to become a better artist, I suddenly had this urge to figure out what the hell does that mean? And the first question I would ask him, I never approached Brad, by the way, because I simply don't talk to people. But if I would talk to him, I would ask, like, what do you mean? What exactly, like, where is the part where you feel like you need to improve? And it needs to be like a practical question. Like, when you're painting something, like, what do you want to paint? There's something missing. It's a very poor description of the situation when someone says, I suck at art, I want to paint better. What the hell does that mean? I felt like a computer that got critical error.
To make it clear, I'm not judging the way Brad expressed himself. I'm just kind of like unconsciously trying to help the situation to kickstart the search, maybe. Like, this is the first thing a person should do when they're having a goal like that. Specify the goal. And specify it all the time. Like, right now, as I'm painting this, I don't even know what the hell this is, but as I'm painting it, I have no goal. Because my goal right now is to talk about this thing. And this is just my autopilot is just doing weird things. The best I can do is just more or less decent combinations of colors. And everything else is completely weird. But I know if I would just stop talking right now. And actually like pay attention and decide on what I'm doing. Even if I would decide on not doing anything. And just putting spots on the canvas. It would suddenly become a decent painting that would have... A meaning in just these spots it would be a good abstraction but right now I'm kind of going for a character but that's just my default brain state going for a character and I really don't know what the hell is going on and it's gonna be a bad painting because of that and I think it represents really well pretty much anything that I do in my life if I just want to be doing something just for the sake of doing it, then I'm not really doing it. I'm doing something outside of it, like a good artist is trying to make good paintings, a bad artist is trying to become a good artist. It's a goal outside of the actual problem, and the goal should always hit the target. Like, literally, the only thing I could think of is that whoever wants to become a better artist don't want that. As an advice, do not want to become a better artist, because it doesn't mean anything. That's the best way to not become a good artist. There, I said something. And here's an interesting thought. If I would ask any beginner artist about what they want to paint, like when they're making the correct goal to paint something, I bet they would describe their idea as, well, I want to paint this guy or something doing this or that in that kind of environment, whatever. And that's, again, that's... Uh, well, not a mistake, this is exactly where you should improve on right away. This is the first stage of creating a painting, actually coming up with the idea. That kind of idea, when you just describe the, the story of the painting, and that's it, that's your first mistake. Because describing a story is really good if you want to be a writer, or a script writer. If you want to work with words, then you just describe the situation and what a person does. Like, try to describe to me this thing. This is beyond any writer's area. Like, you don't write this. You can only paint this. If any writer would describe this, and then another artist would try to paint what that writer described, they would never get anything even close to this. Because this is a very different level of definition. Not to insult any writers out there because writing is a much more complex thing on a bigger scale. A painter can only visualize one action at a time, one state at a time, and a writer can write a whole life. It's a very different thing. A much bigger scale, but a much lower definition. Therefore, when you're coming up with an idea for a painting, you should think much further than that. You should think about the mood, the style. And the word style is a very small word that means a lot of things. And the more things you see inside of a word style, the better the artist you are, I think. For me, a painting is consistent of so many things beyond just a verbal description of the story. It's a combination of colors, it's a combination of details, like what kind of details are there? Are they spiky, are they flat or some kind of blobby? Is the whole picture warm or cold? Is the whole lighting more flat or very three-dimensional and with the light and shadow on each part of it? Are we 
we dropping a very strong sharp lighting on the character or is it mostly a reflected light that creates a very soft and cozy location that's a factor that i can't even describe to you any further because it's not a place for words you go further than that, you should come up with a painting on many levels, on actual visual level of an idea. I think the best way to start with all of this is really paying a good attention to the references. What kind of artists you really find amazing and you would hopefully one day dream about being like them? Well, just look at their artwork and literally copy the style completely. Why not? And not even like that it may go a lot more subtle than that um, find a photo that you really like like the mood suddenly you have a picture where there's really cool you don't even describe that with these words because you don't know that what exactly that is but you just really like the way something is going on in a picture a photograph literally go ahead and paint that or paint your own idea using that X factor of this photo analyzing like what makes it happen in a photo and translating that into your idea. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is always go for something, not just trying to improve yourself. It's not about you. It's about what you do. Again, I'm repeating myself from the previous video. It's also about the self-esteem. Thinking that you're a bad artist is actually very selfish. You shouldn't think about yourself. It has nothing to do with you. It's about your paintings. Think about them. Make a huge life scale goal of making that one painting good. Kind of feeling like Casey Neistat right now with all these broad, aimless life advices that don't lead anywhere. <laughs> don't get me wrong, I love watching Casey talking like that, but I feel like there's something missing. This is like an improv monologue, I don't know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna just paint for a little while. Maybe it will make this creature make a bit more sense. Alright, I guess this is it. Um, probably the weirdest character I've ever created. And that's the thing, the moment I started actually thinking about what I had, and by the way what I had was this, this was much weirder in a sense that you couldn't even figure out why you're looking at this. When this, well, it's kind of nice to look at at least, right? That's the kind of decision I made, like, of course, initial character was just in incredibly weird and one thing I didn't want to change about it is exactly that like what this character is I wanted to keep it that just add and evolve it into something that would make sense as a painting and so I started playing with colors with different types of detail the branch details the balls balloons details the cloth details lines details leaves details details like there's a lot of stuff and it's all spread more or less in a way that we have something interesting here something interesting here and here we have this dynamics going on and in here are these cool lines so the whole picture is somewhat balanced and the colors are also interestingly playing with each other so I just use a whole bunch of different tricks that I just gathered with years just knowing what works what doesn't 
which positioning of these balls one next to each other works and which doesn't so I place them in the right order or just uh, positioning I don't know I added the texture or the feeling of the soft flesh being squeezed by some kind of ropes or something that also made it interesting and different like it's just a play of different tricks working together and that's it there's no sense in this character at all it's not a zombie it's not some kind of creature that mutated because there is much more than just mutation to it it's not just a glitch because it feels kind of natural as well like it's weird you can't put it anywhere as far as I can tell maybe you guys know what the hell this is but I don't so I just created a nice play of colors and details and uh, contrast and whatever to to make sense out of this. So yeah, in the end I'm just gonna say that's what art is. It's just a whole bunch of little tricks. You learn what works and what doesn't. There are bigger things like for instance anatomy. You can learn the whole anatomy, but it doesn't mean you will be able to draw it. You can learn the way lighting works, the way I did in the beginning of this channel, but it doesn't mean that you will be able to paint an actual successful painting just because it has a good lighting. It's all about the little tricks, the devil is in the details. This painting could be a simple flat drawing and it would perfectly work well, just because it's not about the lighting. It's definitely a nice touch, it brings some richness to the visuals, but there's a whole bunch of different tricks to apply to a picture like this if it would be a drawing. Playing with contours, with the contrast of shadows or no shadows at all and playing with uh, applying different textures. A lot of stuff can work and it would still be good simply because you use some of those tricks and you're actually going for some idea that you actually decided on and it's beyond just some verbal description of what it is and this is a good example of a character that literally has no verbal description there that's all i have to say in this episode i wish you all the luck bread in your art school attendance you shared your thoughts online i thought i could add something to it that's how it works i guess and thank you for sharing your thoughts because it uh, made this happen and I thank you for watching if you did I guess I did if you're here love a like and subscribe tell a friend this do wherever you want and I will see you in the next one bye